Hey guys, welcome to another video. And in this video, I'm talking about the things which you have to do before you come to the US. I know your visas are done, your flight tickets are done, you're already packed almost. This is just a reminder to things which you have to do. All right, let's start. Uh, number one is a really basic thing: learn how to cook. As you have seen in my last vlog, that any of the meals here could easily cost like six to ten dollars. To reduce your expenses every day is learn how to cook. And just don't see it like seeing is not learning. This happened to me when I was learning how to cook. I just saw my mom cooking and I thought I knew it. But when I tried it by myself, it was a total disaster. So yes, learn how to cook because it's a really basic thing, but it will take you to a long way and it's gonna save you a lot of money. Number two, sort your finances out. Take a paper, take a pen. I'm talking about this. And write everything down. Write your fees, write your how much you're gonna pay for rent, write how much you're gonna spend in the first month. Take an estimate, take an estimate from your senior. I'm gonna link a video which I've made about monthly expenses for MS student. And you can take help from that or you can take recommendations from that and then you can calculate. The reason why I'm telling you this is because you'll have to get some money from India uh, in either Forex cards or in cash. To do that better, so that you don't get too much money or you don't get too less money, you have to sort that out. I've been asked this question multiple times, like what form of currencies do we use? Do we use Forex cards? Do we use Indian, uh, what do you call it, debit cards or credit cards? Best way is keep your currencies divided. So if, for example, if you're taking $2,000, put $1,000 in your Forex card, put $500 in cash, and put another $500, I don't know, like in an Indian account so that you can use it just in case. Like never rely on one source of funds. The reason being you never know if, if you lose your card or you, you never know what if your wallet is stolen, what are you gonna do then? And I'm gonna make a video on Forex cards really soon. I'm still researching on them because there's a lot of options and the best options I can still tell you is like go for book my forex, they are giving low rates. If you're transferring your fees, if you're doing wire transfer, a lot of universities have contracts with Flywire, they are a startup which are helping students to transfer money so you can do that as well. Also activate your Indian debit cards or credit cards for international payments. I'm going to divide the third part health into three parts. First of all, go to a dentist. Your insurance which you're going to take will definitely not cover dental unless you're taking an expensive one and dental surgeries or dental procedures are sometimes considered luxury here. That's why it is not covered by your insurance. Two weeks before I was flying to the US, I got my wisdom tooth out because I knew that procedure could have cost me here around 200 to $600. And whereas in India, that cost me less than $40. Second thing is go to your ophthalmologist, get your eyes checked. Specs can be expensive. As you know, one of my friends, Ram, he got specs here. It cost, the whole procedure cost him $200. Whereas while in India, it can cost you less than $50. So get like two, three pairs of specs and get that sorted as well. So dental is done, your eye test is done. Third thing is medicines. I mentioned that in my packing video that you should divide your medicine whole packets into two. Keep one small one in your backpack and keep one big one in your check-in bags. So that in just in case while you're traveling for 24 or 30 hours, uh, you might need some headache medicines or you might need some, I don't know, anti-allergics. You have them at your disposal. Fourth point, uh, scan all of your documents. Keep all the documents, scan, keep a picture of them and upload it to Google Drive. There's nothing better than having it on cloud and having it whenever you want. So even if you have like three copies or four copies of it, it's going to be very easy when you have to upload the document uh, onto a machine or onto a website or onto what you call a portal. So at that time, they are at your disposal and as soon as you want them, they're ready to go. Fifth point, IDs. Keep your passport and keep your driving license. If you do not have an Indian driving license yet, make an Indian driving license. Reason being, you can drive in US for a year uh, when you're coming here for the first time with an Indian driving license. And that works really well for your age verification as well. If you're going to a bar or if you're going to a club, you're gonna show them that accents an ID. They, that's a valid ID. If you don't have a license yet, if you don't have an Indian driving license, get a license. 
it's much easier to get a driving license in India than here. Check the validity of your IDs. Another great point. So this is a minimum requirement with most of the immigration counters at countries that, that your passport should be valid for at least six months. I know most of you have got, been gone through this procedure so you know about this. But still, I'm just giving you a heads up. Check your license, check its validity, check your passport and check its validity. If it's not up to date, just upgrade it or just renew it so that you don't have a problem. Next point, check the weather. So when you will be flying in the US, there are some parts of the US which will be cold and there are some parts which will be hot. And it could be colder for you and not for other people. So see it for yourself. You can find a lot of websites with weather forecast of a month or so. And you can go there and check if it is going to be cold or if it is going to be warm and plan accordingly. Because your carry-on has a limit space. Most of the airlines have only like seven kilos of limit. So you utilize that thoughtfully. Like seventh point, write down emergency contacts. I still do this after all this travel time. I have a small diary where I have written my sister's number, couple of people who I know in the US, my Purdue's number, Purdue's address. Uh, wherever I'm going, I'll just write the address and phone number in physical form so that if my phone doesn't work, I still have them at my disposal anytime I can take them out. I can tell that to a taxi driver, I can tell that to somebody else. I also write my passport details in that. So your passport number, where it was issued, what was your uh, expiry date, your name, address and all of that. This also helps when you're filling out a custom form, right? These informations are the ones which would be asked. And when you have written it down in the diary, you don't have to take your passport again and again. Eight point, check all the directions ahead of your flight. When you're gonna land, right? You're not sure how to get from the airport to the university, or you're not sure how to get from the airport to a place where you want to go. So check on Google Maps ahead. Just put like the, where you wanna go and where you're going from and check what are the options available. Ask your seniors in this case, you can do that. But Google Maps work really good here. So even if you put a location like, I want to go from Chicago RD to IITC, or I want to go from Boston Logan International Airport to uh, NU Boston, it'll give you all the options like Uber, Lyft, uh, what kind of trains you can take, what buses you can take. All of these options will be available. It's always better to figure it out in advance so that you have a brief idea on how to go with things when you're done with your immigration check at the US airport. Uh, last point of this video will be just spend time with your family. I don't have friends. I got family. Because in December, there's a lot less chances of you to come back to India to visit your family. So it's going to be a year when you will see them again. So just spend time with your family. Keep down your phone. Just do your college work or packing thing and sort it out. Just spend time with your family and friends because you're not going to see them for a long time now. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Everything which I've mentioned in this video, all the links will be in the description. Check that out. If you have any doubts, feel free to comment down below. If you have any video ideas for me or if you, any, if you have any video requests for me, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much guys for watching and until the next time.